So good morning everyone. My name is Brenda Wawa, communication specialist at the Simit. Um, we are attending the seventh uh, African Science Week and with me here is uh, Dr. Stephen Mugo who is the regional representative for Simit in Africa. I would just like to take him to take us through um, you know what we are doing here and how wheat and maize research work is is you know, contributing to improving livelihoods in Africa so we'll take a few questions for Stephen and um, I hope you enjoy our time together thank you so much so Stephen welcome just introduce yourself and let us know who you are and what you're doing in Africa okay now uh, my name is Stephen Mugo I am a maize breeder um, and also, I am also the CIMIT Africa regional representative in addition to the CIMIT Kenya country representative. Um, we are really glad to be here as CIMIT uh, team together with them um, to attend the FARA uh, 7th Agricultural Science Week. And I think it is an important opportunity for us to reflect what we have done and what we need to do in the future because Africa is clearly dependent on agriculture and Africa as we know must feed itself and for it to feed itself there are certain things that it, 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 it has to do because currently it's not able to feed itself it's a massive import, importation of food and that can be reversed by doing certain things which we are discussing here so Africa has been known for very many negative narratives, um, hunger, starvation, not enough to feed itself. Just tell us how maize and wheat research is contributing to improving livelihoods and changing this overall narrative that has been there for Africa for a long time. Um, maize is, is an important crop uh, in Africa. Um, right now I think it has surpassed every other staple. Uh, which were known to be traditionally African crops and that is for good reasons because of the ease of planting maize and the ease of, uh, of, of maize getting into trade. And then wheat is also an important crop in Africa. The North African countries have higher consumption than any other country that we have in the, in, in the world. And so by improving these two crops I believe that we would go a long way uh, to feed Africa, especially with the carbohydrates. But also these crops also contribute a bit to the protein and also vitamins and, and others. So by working together with others who are working on other crops that will be able to supply the other nutrients, I think we can be able to take Africa beyond where we are today. Um. There's a lot of emergencies that are emerging in Africa and a lot of donors and funders are actually very keen about humanitarian work and dealing with emergencies that are happening. Uh, here in Farah we have a host of donors who have come and my question is, is why should donors care about research? Why should they care about maize and wheat research in particular? Um, today uh, we do know that um, the donor agencies they spend up to or even more than that five billion dollars at for emergency food supply to africa in terms of crisis but we do know that in research if we take an example of maize and wheat with just a budget of about that five million we can be able to make a difference and this has been really clearly demonstrated with the resources that we already have hand, uh, CIMIT together working with the partners who are the National Agricultural Research Systems, our sister CG centers, uh, the government, other government institutions, the pharma um, organizations, we've been able to develop maize, drought tolerant maize, or in general, stress tolerant maize that with the drought tolerance then the cotton seed quantities, I think that would make a difference. More than 52,000 uh, tons of maize are released in the last few years, which are benefiting a large number of farmers. And the, I think when we come to wheat, it is the same, where very, very high yielding wheat varieties have been developed 
and availed to farmers. And then much more recently we did realize that uh, getting the varieties is not enough alone, but we have to have a mechanism, a process of getting the farmers produce them in the best way. So by uh, starting our sustainable intensification, we've been able to reach a large number of farmers. Now we are targeting about 650,000 uh, farmers um, reached within a very short time. So, and this is in addition to uh, addressing uh, very pressing issues and especially emerging diseases. We recently, I think in May, in the last four years, starting from 2011, a new maize disease that appeared in East Africa and devastating maize in Kenya, Tanzania, and uh, Uganda, Ethiopia, Rwanda, and even in uh, DRC, we were able to respond very, very rapidly together with our partners. And we are at the verge of stemming uh, probably what we call in quotes a catastrophe by getting maize that is resistant uh, or tolerant to this disease which will be hitting the market in one or two years and this is also in addition to having um, uh, also addressed the UG99 a disease that the, the warrant thought that we had defeated uh, many years stem rust and then it suddenly appeared in East Africa and in Uganda and being weedborne with the potential to, uh, to, to damage wheat, even in far places like the Middle East. And by setting up a screening facility in Kenya and carrying out shuttle breeding together with our partners, we have come up with varieties that can be able to stem this. And this is also in addition to addressing other issues, especially, as I mentioned, the systems research, where we know that the cereals that we are dealing with, they are not planted in isolation. So we come up with the systems where we can be able to produce them sustainably, despite uh, decrease in water, despite the, the interference of, by climate change, and also despite um, other, other issues that may be there in the world. So we, we, do, we, 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 do, we are really upbeat that we can be able to address this, but we cannot do it as one institution alone. CIMIT does not um, have own money. And so we would, would depend on, uh, on, uh, on donors uh, who are willing to work with us and support this work. We also cannot do it alone because there is no one institution that, that can be able to do our own. But we need, uh, CIMIT requires um, other uh, people and especially the national uh, government to support it in, um, in raising the, the funds and also in uh, creating environments where we can be able to test the, the, the technology, very rapidly uh, develop it and scale it up to the point where more farmers can be able to access, success it. So one final word um, that you'd want to pass across, particularly in terms of um, ensuring or CIMIT ensuring that farmers get these technologies that we are working very hard to develop and they are benefiting from them. So just one last word. Mm, CIMIT has a very small number of staff in Africa. Indeed, we have only that one staff uh, supported by just about 150 other people and so alone we cannot be able to do it. We clearly needed to set up a critical mass of staff and this is why we really value training, training at all levels, uh, starting with the degree training, the people who want to be scientists and, and, and do the science that we deal with, the plant breeding, uh, plant agronomy, socio-economic uh, science, uh, 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 all that. And so we work with the, with, the, with, the, with, the, with the partners to be able to offer that training. And also to offer on the job training on how to breed better, on the basics of breeding, the basics of agronomy, the basics of social sciences. And then beyond there, we do need to partner with, the, with others that can be able to, to carry the message that we have. And then we also need to expose the farmers, the technologies. So by working within the systems work, we do uh, work with, um, especially with the, with the extension systems, to expose the farmers through a series of field days. And we, we are proud that we do reach more than 10,000 farmers.
farmers in one year in a few days. The other area that we where we really needed to uh, to work um, together in getting the, the 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 technologies out is getting the seed itself out. We did realize that just developing the varieties and offering them to the seed companies is not enough. We needed to create a seed systems um, uh, unit and the, we have in Africa we have a, a team of more than uh, five to six who work with the seed companies. They expose them to the varieties, they train their staff on how to produce a seed, certified seed, quality seed, and then also train them on how to market and all that. And we do believe by having all these um, different ways we can be able to reach the farmer better, get them the variety that they need, get them the information that they need to, to be able to grow it, and also train the national partners to be able to, uh, to increase the number of people who are involved in the business of getting technologies to farmers. All right. Thank you so much. Uh